Keep yourself in the loop of everything football on the Golden State Media Concepts Football Podcast. The latest news on and off the field, be it college football, Big Ten, SCC, Big 12, Pac-12, ACC, to the NFL. We've got you covered. Listen to the Golden State Media Concepts Football Podcast. Welcome everyone to the GSMC Football Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I am your host, Jeff Malanoff, and with me is my good buddy, is my carnal to my bronco, Mark Souza. Hello, my friend. How's it going? Good. How are you? Uh, Better than Josh Rosen. Yes, because we have a lot to talk about in this week in football, or this day in football, actually. Both week and yeah. day. Because we have, we are talking to talk about the Thursday night football massacre that was the Denver Broncos versus the Arizona Cardinals. We're also going to be talking about each game from Week Seven and really go into detail on who's going to win and how they're going to do. Then we're going to talk about the top twenty-five college football rankings and who they are playing and if there will be some upsets. Mm-hmm. So let's get it right into it. The Denver Broncos defeated the Arizona Cardinals on Thursday night, forty-five to ten. Josh Rosen had three interceptions. Two of them ran back for touchdowns. This was all defense this entire game, and it really showed. And one of the most disappointing things about this game to me is um, David Johnson's uh, performance. 14 attempts, 39 yards, two average, 2.8-yard average. And do you want to say something about that, Mark? Yeah. I would love to talk about the Cardinals' offense, but did you want to talk about the entire stats before I uh, go into it? We can talk about that after this because I know what's about to happen. Okay. So. Rant incoming. Let's talk about the Cardinals' offense for a minute, okay? Look, I get it. You have a rookie quarterback, but he is a quarterback who's intelligent. He knows he knows how to throw the football. At least I'm assuming he does because you picked him with the 11th pick in the draft. Okay. Now, Mike McCoy, your offense is terrible. Do you have a young quarterback? Yes, but so do other teams. I don't see the Browns having this problem. I don't see, I don't know, the Jets having this problem amongst others. Okay. For some reason, you can't get the ball to David Johnson in space. You keep handing him the ball to run up the middle. Your offensive line is terrible. They can't create lanes. You have a dynamic running back in David Johnson. He can do way more than just put his head down and run the ball up the middle. Get him in a space, my friend. Toss him the ball on the outside every once in a while. Get him a screen pass. Put him out in in a route where he can go one-on-one with the running back and have a shorter check down pass for Rosen. It'll help him. It'll help the team. They'll move the ball. But no. Your play calling is absolutely atrocious. Absolutely atrocious. You're not getting the ball to Larry Fitzgerald. Is he older? Yes. Is he still a decent player? Absolutely. I will give you the credit, though. Last night was maybe the one game where Larry Fitzgerald did actually get the football. But regardless, you drop Rosen back to pass. I don't know how many times last night. He's getting hit hit 13 times, sacked six other times. At some point, something's got to change, my friend. Your play calling is not good. You're running the ball a third and five, down by 21 points, third and five at midfield, and you run a running play up the middle for three yards and then punt. The second play of the game, you call a timeout because you don't have the right personnel in the game. It's scripted. These plays are scripted. I don't know what to say. I feel like... This guy has got to go. The Arizona Cardinals need to move on from Mike McCoy. You cannot have another game. This is the sixth game where they've had under 300 yards of total offense. You cannot do this week in and week out. 
you got to open up the playbook. you got to get the ball to your best players and put them in situations to be successful. You're not doing that. It's time to go. The Cardinals need to move on. Well, as you were saying this rant, Mike McCoy has been fired. Are you serious? I'm not even kidding. He's been fired and promoting and getting promoted to offensive coordinator is quarterbacks coach Brian Leftwich. Byron Leftwich? Oh, yeah, the old uh, Steelers. He was Jacksonville. No, he was Jacksonville's quarterback. Well, yeah, but he was Ben's, Ben's backup for a long time. Yeah, but he was mainly known for the quarterback for the Jacksonville Jaguars. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's good. I mean, I don't know how he is as a coach, but anything's better than what we saw last night. Yeah, that was all happening as you were ranting, by the way. That firing just happened. Well, that's good because Steve Wilkes needs to change the offense corner before it affects his job status. So, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, no, that's we'll see if Leftwich can do better, but he is a former quarterback himself, so um, maybe he'll be able to call plays that will actually help build Josh Rosen's confidence, help move the offense down the field while um, while they transition from a veteran quarterback to a young, unproven guy like Josh Rosen. I think Rosen has some skills. He has some talent, but you have to be put in situations where you can be successful. And what we saw last night, Rosen throws two pick sixes, and I'm not saying that those are great throws by any means, although the second one I think wasn't really his fault. But you you got to call plays that take advantage of what he does best and put him in situations where he can complete passes and move the chains. Turning around and handing the ball off to David Johnson for two yards and then going on a second, third, and long is just not going to cut it. It's not putting your quarterback in a position for success. I think the fans have had enough. I think we saw it last night. Well, apparently Arizona also had enough because they fired him. I think that's a move in the right direction. We'll see if Leftwich can change something, but... Yeah, the Broncos, uh, let's talk about the Broncos now. Um, They get back on track last night. They win the game. Do you think that this win can propel them into maybe a uh, contender for a playoff spot? I wouldn't say a playoff spot, but definitely a positive thing looking forward. They don't have to. They have what many would say is the biggest uh, domination of any team in this season so far. I mean, 45-10 to 10 really speaks for itself. Two pick sixes. Uh, Case game didn't have that much of a good game. Philip Lindsay had 90 yards rushing on, which was pretty good. Lindsay and Emmanuel Sanders are really the highlights for me. Mm-hmm. But I mean, other than the stellar defense, of course. I do need to say, overall, there's still work to be done. Case game had less passing yards than Josh Rosen did, even with the three picks he had. Um, he didn't have to throw the ball, though. There's just a lot of work that needs to be done offensively for the Denver Broncos as well. Their defense looked great, but they're facing a very poor offense and offensive scheme. So yeah, a team I, that beat I, themselves. I, I would not put this into a perspective like we're one of the best teams. We can steal this division or anything of that nature. But there's still a lot of work to be done. But this definitely helps us with uh, morale. Yeah, they're three and four, you know, and uh, they'll have time before their next game, and they're going to need it. Do you know who they play next? Who, the Broncos or the Cardinals? The Broncos. I'm assuming they're facing a good team. This is an AFC West team. It's the Chiefs, isn't it? They play the Chiefs next, but their schedule is just absolutely brutal. You ready for it? I'm. My body is ready. Let's do this. Their next, let's see, five games, Chiefs, Texans, Chargers, Steelers, Bengals. Wait, I'm sorry. Say that one more time. Like, wait, wait, wait. Let's, let's say that. Let's let's go that one at a time. Chiefs, Chiefs, which is a tough game. I'm trying. I, I was. I did that as I wasn't listening. I was doing it as a hold up. They have a tough schedule ahead of them. So if anyone got that mixed up, I'm sorry. Texans. But that's a tough game. Chargers. Another. That's a playoff. That's a Super Bowl contender. Also. Steelers. That's a. Uh, okay, tough game. I'm not gonna say Super Bowl contender. Bengals. Another tough team. So all those teams are that, that could be five, 500 or better, but dude, the only team that's 500 is the Texans. Everybody else is over. That could be five straight losses. Yeah, so they needed that game last night. Wow, that's that's something else. Their schedule, If let's just say that they do get through that tough schedule. Their last few games are very favorable. They would play um, 
the 49ers, the Browns, the Raiders, and the Chargers in their last four, which is you could see them going three and one in that game or in that, that stretch. You know the Chargers, you're saying? Yeah, but, I mean, they'd have to go – They'd have to go. I think they have to go three and two in their next five games, or else they're done because they're three and four right now. So, if you go, so, if you go two and three in your next five so games, so they lose these five. So like, set like six and ten is like what we're predicting at the moment. So right now they're three and four. Let's say these next five tough games they go two and three. They would be what five and seven. They'd be dead. Like they'd be dead in the water at five and seven. Well, we 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 got to give them some CPR. Get quick. Give 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 them some water too. Yeah. So they must win a minimum of three games, wouldn't you say? In the next five, they got to win three of those somehow. Some way. That's a tall, tall, tall glass of water to order. Tall order. I don't think the water matters. The, uh, fine. You don't. You got to work on. Fine. You got to work on these analyses. You don't Jeff. drink water and see what happens. You got to work on them. You don't drink water and see what happens. Uh, you'll shrivel up and die. Yeah. So they need the water. It's a tall glass of water to order, but they mm-hmm. still have to drink it. Okay. Anyways, so what else did you take from last night's uh, game? Anything you want to talk about? The Cardinals are going nowhere fast. They might be Somebody the worst. Somebody get league. David Johnson the damn ball outside of the well, tackles. They, they did give it to him around thirteen or fourteen times. They turn around, they hand it to him, and three dudes are in the backfield tackling him before he can even look. They down the did field. run the ball unnecessarily amount of times on the inside, which he should be an outside guy. They should at least test his outside ability. He's fast. Their He's, offensive line is not as good as it used to be. Would you agree with me that David Johnson, I look, I get it, he missed the last season with that wrist injury, but we don't forget David Johnson, right? Like, you still remember David Johnson? Like, not now, but, like, his How career. How good he was? Yeah, he had a wrist injury, by the way, so it's not a affecting career his... Ending, or not career ending, but it was a, se- <laughs> it was a season-ending wrist Yeah, injury. but it's an injury that it doesn't affect his, like, athleticism. You know, like a knee injury or a leg or something like that. So how do you not get that guy the ball outside? How do you not get him the ball in a route? I don't get it. Like, I just don't understand why... You don't focus your offense around your best player. He's so dynamic. I mean, would you agree with me that he is athletically in the same class as Gurley, Le'Veon Bell? Like, he's an all-around running back. Am I right? He He, caught, like, 80 passes two years ago. Like, the dude, we didn't forget about that, right? He was a fantasy football monster. But he was a great player. Like, he's just, regardless of the numbers, he's fast. He's big. He's strong. Like, he's... I don't know. He's bigger than a lot of these other running backs and just as fast. He's a, he's a impressive human he's being. He's on the wrong team. Let's just be real. Just trade him if you're not going to use him. They will never trade him. No way. Unless they get like three first-round picks. I mean, they're not going to trade him, but at least they fired Mike McCoy. That needed to happen. I wonder right. if they listen well, let to me this. Ask you, what would you trade for David Johnson right now? I think David Johnson is more valuable than Le'Veon Bell. More than Honestly, Bell. yeah, because I think he he has less tread on the tires, I, or uh, more tread on the tires. He has been used less, and I guess the saving grace for David Johnson for last year being hurt the whole season is that he didn't take a lot of punishment. You know, he mm-hmm. didn't get hit four to five hundred times like Le'Veon Bell did. So, I don't know. What do you think? How valuable is David Johnson? Well. The thing is, he's coming off that career-ending or not? God, I keep saying career-ending. Stop Season saying that. Ending wrist injury. It's a wrist injury. It's a fluke accident. Well, he, he took him out for the whole season. That's I, the thing. No, because you have to hold the ball. That makes sense. And with that in mind, he is still a crucial player. If he's on any other team, like I don't know, put him on a. Uh, what team needs a running back right now? Give me, give me a team that needs a running back. Uh, any team that needs a running back or any team. Uh, I would say, although this team feels like they have their running back, I would say like Jacksonville or Tennessee. But they have Leonard Fournette. I'm saying, but Jacksonville. he's not good. He's you're not good. Leonard, you're saying Leonard Fournette is not good. No, you think he's a draft bust? I don't think he's the worst player, but I don't think he's that good. So, but I see Tennessee. Derek he's a Henry, limited get, player. All right, get rid of Derek Henry. Put in David Johnson. That team is pretty baller. 
there are multiple teams that could use David Johnson, but I just think like, what could he do if he was in like a like what offensive scheme you think fits him better? A team that passes a lot. Any scheme that gets him the damn ball. That's what I'm. That's what I'm like saying. Quick passes. And I know that like, sounds very simple, but like I think he would do well on a team. You let me finish. Go ahead, rookie. Like, um, I'm saying like quick sh- uh, check down passes to him. Uh, more of a sweep to the outside type of guy. Like maybe even an option type pet run with a with a mobile quarterback. I don't think there's an offensive style that wouldn't fit his game. He can, he's fast. Well, he's the Arizona's quick. fit doesn't. Their own offense because they don't have a style. They just turn around and hand him the ball, and he gets he gets stuffed every single time. But yeah, he would do wonders on teams like I don't know. Can you imagine? Like this team doesn't need need him, but can you imagine if he was on the Saints? If he was on the Saints, if he was running that offensive scheme, he may be the best running back in football. Exactly. He has the skills. He has the ability. He is, to me, one of the top five running backs in the NFL based on ability. Period. Like, yeah. if I'm starting a team... It's just, he's so underutilized. It, he does, it looks like he's, like, he's done almost, right? It feels like he's almost done, but it's not. Yeah. It's not the case. He's just, one of he's... the top five run. He's not done. I guarantee you, Jeff, I guarantee you, if they can get him the ball in more advantageous positions... He will flourish. He will show you that he is still one of the top running backs in the NFL. Don't forget what he did two years ago. A wrist injury doesn't change anything. But he doesn't have an offense with Carson Palmer anymore. It's, it's a different offense completely. And now we're going to see a change at offensive coordinator. So we'll see exactly where they don't this deserve team goes. him is basically what we're saying. No, they don't. They don't deserve Larry Fitzgerald or David Johnson right now. So hopefully Leftwich will at least be able to utilize these players and help his young quarterback make it easy for him. Get him put put in plays, call plays that have Rosen getting the ball to his best players in good positions. I feel like it's so simple. So simple. Mm-hmm. But I think we need to take a break. And we come yes. back. You need a break after all this nonsense. We're going to talk about the week seven matchups. We're, We're going to give depth. our picks. Yep. And scores predictions, even though we get all those wrong. I don't think we've gotten one right so far. Uh, I, I did really well last week. So you speak well, for yourself. Well, maybe picking teams wise. I got not... the scores real good, too. No, you didn't. Uh, I don't. I mean, no one's going to pick the exact same score. That's but what I'm saying. We're if never you pick 27 right. 24 and it's 24 21, you have the same team winning, you won. You hit. No, that's a lie. You got to get exactly right, or else you lose. Yeah, that sounds like somebody who got six picks right last week saying that's a, I, did, six out of what? Uh, thirteen. How many 12? did you get right? Ten. Okay. Well, who won the <laughs> fantasy bet? This is not the fantasy football podcast. But yet, I know my players better than you do. All right, you we'll don't. be right back right after this. Well, kind of the proof of that, but we'll get into all that right after this. Are you looking for help for your fantasy football team? Check out the GSMC Fantasy Football Podcast. Get today's best advice on who to start, who to sit, even who you should draft. From sleeper picks to red-hot lineups, they got it all covered for you. That's gsmcpodcast.com backslash fantasy-football-podcast. We'll cover traditional leagues, dynasty, PPR, even IDP leagues. When you need fantasy help, there's just one show to hit up. Don't forget to like them on Facebook and follow Follow them on Twitter. Visit gsmcpodcast.com for more info.
and welcome back to the GSMC Football Podcast. We just finished talking about the Thursday Night Football Massacre between the Denver Broncos and the Arizona Cardinals. We went, uh, well, I didn't go off, but Mark Mark definitely did go off on the offensive coordinator. That former. Got fired. You got him fired because he just got fired as you were ranting about him. So technically, you kind of did get him fired if you think about it. If they were probably listening to you and said, hey, let's fire him. Nah, he's probably he right. should have been fired at halftime, to be honest with you. should have been fired before the game started. Anyways... We are looking at the rest of week seven of the NFL season. Week seven matchups. Let's start off with the 49ers versus the St. Louis Los Angeles Rams. Oof. Close. Close call. I almost did that. All right. Los Angeles Rams, 6 0 versus the 1 in 5 49ers. Do we really need to talk about this one? I mean, the Rams do have Cooper Cup who will be missing the game. I think that's important because he is Jared Goff's uh, red zone target, red zone receiver, but, you know, a big part of their offense as he plays most of the plays, I think 90% of the time he's on the field. So that is a big loss for them in this game as they're going to let him rest. They get a bye week, so they'll give him two weeks to recover. Uh, for the Niners, you know, I think that they can score some points in this game, but of course I got the Rams winning. I don't think this will be the week that the Rams lose. I think the Rams will win 34 to 27. Okay. I agree with you that the Rams undefeated streak will continue. The 49ers do have a good offense where they put up points. Like not, it's not very looked at much, but they average more than 20 points a game. And Better offense than the uh, Cardinals, for sure. Well, Cardinals are last in total offense. Yeah. Anyways, as I was saying, um, that was rankings in last in total offense, too. So, it's just like... So, who do you got? I have the Los Angeles Rams also just because the 49ers defense is so, like, lacking in so many different areas that Jared Goff can have a great game. Todd Gurley is almost guaranteed to have a great game. There is just... There is no stopping this... Rams offense, who is actually number one in total offense in the league. So mm-hmm. I'm going to have to give it to the Los Angeles Rams for Score. obvious reasons. I'm going to go, let's go 38 to 21. All right. Who do we have next on the slate? On uh, Next on the list, we have the Titans versus the San Diego Char- wow. Los Angeles Chargers. I did it twice. Wow. Uh, good Lord. Jeff is stuck in the they 90s. M- they might as well be the San Diego Chargers. My Lord. Anyways. Um, Titans, Chargers. Who do you... I'll let you go first again. Titans, Chargers. Man, I just don't trust that offense uh for tennessee i the chargers defense i think is better than what it's shown but they're starting to get back on track as a team i think that their offense is just much more consistent it's more dynamic melvin gordon should have another good game i like the chargers in this one i don't know if it's going to be particularly close uh, but i I will say that they'll win uh 27 to 13 well looking at both the titans and the chargers Philip Rivers has almost a thousand more passing yards than Marcus Mariota does. Philip Rivers has fifteen touchdown passes to Marcus Mariota is two. Melvin Gordon has more rushing yards than the leading receiver of the Titans. Corey Davis was three hundred and eighty-five yards to Melvin Gordon's four hundred and eighty six or four hundred and sixty six yards, excuse me. So looking at this, this looks like it's all Chargers, and with the defense of the Chargers, I'm trying to believe that they are Super Bowl contenders in the AFC. I'm starting to believe the the hype, and I'm going to go with the Chargers on this one, and they're going to take it 24 to to to, 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 to let's go let's go 24 14. All right, cool. Next this is game. also at Wembley Stadium in London. Just and the FYI. next game that you have. The next game that I have is the Buffalo Bills versus the Indianapolis Colts. Derek Anderson's first start for the Buffalo Bills as they benched Nathan Peterman for obvious reasons. I had those reasons, but apparently they got intercepted. So, ha, ha, ha. get it, get it. So who do you got? Get it. Your turn. Um, that's a tough one. Indianapolis is 79.4% favorites according to ESPN's Football Power Index, which sounds a little ridiculous to me. So who do you got? I have the 
the Indy buff. I'm gonna go Buffalo Bills. All right. What do you think the score will be? It's gonna be a. Let's give. It's gonna be a small one. It's gonna go twenty-one to fourteen. Twenty-one fourteen Bills. Yes. Okay. Now, quickly, tell me why you picked the Bills. Because they have had that fluke game against the the Vikings, and I think it's if they're gonna do that well against a, that good of a team, supposedly that good of a team. The Indianapolis Colts have no direction around them, neither defense or offensive. Angelic's their only mm-hmm. player that's worthy of gotcha. being discussed. So you got to go with a team that actually f- resembles a football team. Uh, I like the Colts here just because you said it, Andrew Luck. I am take. I'm looking at two teams that I don't think are very good, but one has a good quarterback and the other has Derek Anderson. So mm-hmm. I will definitely take the Colts in this game. I think that they will control the game. They will control the clock. Uh, They'll probably force a couple turnovers. So uh, Colts will win this game. I think it'll be a score of 26 to 13. 26 to 13. Okay. And, but there are some, uh, they have, uh, T.Y. Hilton is questionable for this game. Josh Allen is out, which is going to be a big factor, but I think they're still going to pull it off, the Bills. They still have the Bills taking this. Moving on, we got the Cleveland Browns versus the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Um, and then it's going to be in Tampa Bay at Raymond James Stadium. Mm-hmm. Jameis Winston versus Baker Mayfield, two number one overall picks going at it toe-to-toe. So who do you got? I'm going Cleveland Browns on this one. Their defense is just they're 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 a turnover machine at this moment. They're very good defense, and I think that's what's going to put them over the top of this game. I'm going to give them a 27 to 20 victory. 27 20 for the Cleveland Browns on the road, huh? Yes. All right. Um, yeah, it's. I think it's going to be a good game, but you know the Buccaneers did fire their defensive coordinator, so maybe we'll see an improvement on that side of the ball. Probably not, but maybe. Uh, Too early to tell. Maybe Mike McCoy and Mike Smith could start a team where they don't play defense and they don't score any points. Um, so they probably the 2017 Cleveland Browns. They probably wouldn't. Or do or, or the 2008 uh, Detroit Lions, or the 1976 Buccaneers. I do like the Buccaneers in this game, though, and I will say that because the Browns can give up a lot of points. Or the 96 Jets. The Browns can give up a lot of points. Or the 90 Patriots. Come on, man. Sorry, what? I'm just talking about all the teams that are bad that didn't score the any points. The Buccaneers can score points. They're mm-hmm. at home. Mm-hmm. Maybe they get a, a little bit of a, a spark plug with the new defensive coordinator, new play calling. Uh, both teams are not very good, but I'm going to take the home team here. Bucks, 31 Both have two wins, which is weird to think about. Bucks, 31-27. Moving on. Okay. Uh, the Detroit Lions versus the Miami Dolphins. I'm going Miami Dolphins on Whoa. this. What? Who? The Miami Dolphins. Oh, no. Don't say it. Wait. you're. Who's going to be Stafford? Who's the other quarterback that'll post um, Stafford? That guy that played at Arizona State. Uh, Are you talking about? He backed up Payne Manning. That's all I'm going to say. I'm not going to say his name. Are you talking about? Don't say it. Don't. You dare say it. What month are we in? Mark, I'm looking at you as a friend right now. Don't. What month are we in? Mark, I'm talking to you as a friend. Please don't say it. Brocktober. It does is our friendship mean? Does our friendship mean nothing to you? A uh, six foot seven quarterback for the win. So our friendship means nothing to so you. So you got the Dolphins. Go ahead. Tell me the score. Tell me. Broncos was going to win the game. What's the score going to be? Come on, man. Brock Osweiler will put, put these up. people to sleep. Let's go. Brock, I'm just I'm just saying this in a most disappoint, disappointing voice. Because Come on. I'm tired of this stupid Brock Bull Maloney. Anyways, as I was saying, Brock Osweiler is going to take. Um, I can't do it. You made me lose the little bit, man. man. Pick. Fine, fine, fine. Dolphins take the Detroit Lions to school and win 35 35- to 14. Whoa. That's a big game for the Brock. The Brock to gun. All right. Well, I actually have Detroit Why winning, even though I so talked about Brock so Osweiler depressed. a lot. I'm so depressed right now. Detroit will win this game, and they will do that because their receivers 
are just going to be too much for Miami. Miami's got a great corner in Xavier Howard, but he's you only one man. Don't to him. He's all, a Brock, he's all a Brock lover. You don't need to listen to him. He's biased. I just said the. You're the one who picked Brock. I'm picking Matt Stafford and the Lions. The Lions are going to win this game. I don't trust you. You're going to go, but then I think of Brock nope. Eiswell and go, sure, why nope. not? Detroit wins this game 31-24. Okay. You're trusting a team that's not good. The team that lost to the 49ers for crying out Both loud. teams aren't particularly good. Well, one team beat a good defense. The other team beat... Well, that's a- not the way that this works, you know? Teams win games all the time that they shouldn't, and teams that's- lose games all the time okay. they shouldn't. Remember when the Vikings lost to the Bills? Yeah, they were a good team that lost to a bad team. They got team. crushed, though. Okay, so next game. Moving on. The next game, thank God Brock Osweiler is no longer we talked about, is the Carolina Panthers versus the Philadelphia Eagles in in Philadelphia, mm-hmm. which is a hostile environment, to say the least. And looking at this in Lincoln Financial Field... I'm going to go with the defending Super Bowl champion, Philadelphia Eagles, by a score of 23-17. 23-17 for the Eagles? Yes. Yeah, I also like the Eagles in this game. They're at home. I feel like they're getting back on track. Alshon Jeffrey, Carson Wentz, and, you know, they figure out with those running backs how to utilize them, but... I just don't trust uh, Carolina in this game. I, I don't think that they'll be able to, to win. So you said, I'm sorry, what did you say? I said the winner of the game. The Eagles will be the 23-17. to 23-17. I got the Eagles winning uh, pretty close, 24-20. Okay, now we're moving on to, the, uh, actually, you know what? We're going to take a short break right now. When we come back, we'll finish off the rest of the games that are happening on Sunday. We won't be talking about Monday Night Football. That'll be set for Monday, for obvious reasons. And we'll finish this up when we get back to you right after this. Stay tuned. Check out the show that's built on the MMA. From the UFC to extreme cage fighting, they got the fights covered. Check out the GSMC MMA podcast. Get the latest news on past or upcoming fights. Join us as we talk to and about some of the biggest names in the MMA, past, present, and future. When it's the fight game, there's just one show to check out. GSMCpodcast.com backslash MMA dash podcast. Don't forget to like them on Facebook and follow them on Twitter. Visit G. SMCpodcast.com for more info. Welcome back to the GSMC Football Podcast. After compilations with my friend Mark and thinking if I continue his friendship after his love for Brock Dagon, I have considered to keep him on as a friend and a host. So we're good there. We just finished Thank talking you. about the first half. Then you're welcome. First half of the games of the week seven matchups that are happening on Sunday. We talked about Thursday night football and the destruction of McCoy's career. Mike McCoy's career is probably over now because of that terrible performance his team put maybe on. Maybe he can coach like a Division two college. Yeah, maybe look up at like North Dakota State or something. Yeah. Anyways, as we were saying, we're moving on. We uh, predicted our matchups and now we're moving on to, we just finished Panthers and Eagles, if I'm not mistaken. Mm-hmm. Now we we're did. going to the Patriots and Chicago the Bears. Duh, bears. So do you got da bears or da pats? I got, I got the Patriots. You got da pats from Boston, Boston, Mass. Yeah, I got the Pats. We'll see the Pats win this game. Da pats, high scoring in my opinion. But man, I think the Patriots their win against the Chiefs. I think that's going to propel them forward. Um, 
You, They're I, only three point favorites. You could see a letdown team. game. You could see this being a letdown game, but uh, for me, I don't think so. I think the Patriots are playing really well right now. So are the Bears, though. To be fair, but the Bears. Yeah, I'm gonna go with Tom Brady in this matchup. Patriots will win this game. Uh, I think it'll be a score of twenty or sorry, thirty to twenty four Patriots. Okay, well I'm gonna go with the Pats as well, as I see them taking this game against the Chicago Bears, but not by much. I say twenty eight oh no, actually you know what I'm gonna change that. Thirty one to twenty eight victory over the Chicago Duh Bears. Yeah. Who's the next game? The next game that's not the Bears is uh I'm gonna stop that now. Is going to be let me just Texans and Jaguars. So AFC South versus AFC South. A lot of implications with this game. Both teams are three and three. Who I'll uh since you went first last time, I'm gonna go first this time. I'm gonna go with the Jacksonville Jaguars. Jacksonville at home. Their defense is still good. They have been slacking a little bit the last couple of weeks because Jalen Ramsey's big mouth has kind of gotten them into trouble, granted. Mm -hmm. But I think this is a time to bounce back against a a weaker team in the Texans, and I think this is what's going to happen. All right. What's the score going to be? It is going to be... Let's let's, let's go go, uh, 31-27. 31-27 for the Jacksonville Jaguars. Um, Yes. I disagree here. I'm going with the Texans. <gasps> How dare you? Yeah. Um, I just think that Jacksonville's offense is too up and down right now. I trust Deshaun Watson. And, yes, the Jaguars have a good defense. But I trust Deshaun to make smart decisions. I don't expect this to be the highest scoring game in the world. Um, as both defenses, I think, are better than the offenses that they're facing. But... Um, I, I expect both quarterbacks to be under pressure, uh, a defensive game, but I think the Texans will win this game by a score of 23-16. to 16. Okay, 23-16, that's fair. Next, we got the New Orleans Saints versus the Baltimore Ravens. Call, call, call. All right. The Ravens are two and a half point favorites, but I, that's kind of shocking to me actually, but I'm going with the Camara and Breeze led New Orleans Saints. That offense has been on a tangent. Camara's at the top of his game. Breeze a tangent? Is gone on a warpath. Like okay. A good thing. A good thing. Um, <laughs> Breeze is playing his some of his best football. Camara's at the top of his game. Ingram's Me- back. I was going to say that. Go ahead. Ingram's back, as well as just Michael Thomas being very uh, being at the top of his game. Also, this team doesn't really have a lot of holes when it comes to their offensive side, and I think that's going to play the big factor in this game. I think they're taking it forty-four to twenty-eight. Whoa, they're going to score forty-four against that Ravens defense. Yes, that's an interesting thing to say. I bet. Um... That'll raise some eyebrows out there, but... Yeah, especially the Rocks people's eyebrow. I do like the Saints in this game, but the Ravens' defense has been playing really well, but their offense has been playing well, too, uh, to give them credit. I just... I don't know. I think the Ravens are a little playing a little bit above their heads right now, and I think the Saints are getting back that's to... Where, that's, what they're, that's what's going to happen. They're going to move them down to earth. But I don't think it'll be that high of a scoring game as the Ravens don't sc- score at a high rate and the Saints um, or the Ravens defense don't give up very many points at all. So, in fact, they haven't given up a second ha- half touchdown this year. But I think the Saints are going to win this game 27 to 20. Well, you know, they haven't let a lot of defense a touchdown in the second half, granted, but things are meant to be, records are made to be broken. Sure. So, what's the next game on the slate? The next game on the slate, would you like to guess? Do you know any of the games? No, just tell me. Cowboys and Redskins. Oh, boy. I'm going to go Redskins because they made a statement game last week. Alex Smith has been playing really well, and their defense is kind of stepping up, and I don't think they'll have a problem with the Dallas Cowboys. They're going to take this 25 to 19. 
25-19. Okay, so what about the Cowboys statement game last week against the Jaguars? Are you di- going to disregard that? Or is I am that... disregarding it. Okay, so both teams. It's a one-time thing. It meant nothing. It was just a. It was just one crazy night. We we had a little too much to drink. Both teams played very well in their last game. This di- this game is definitely difficult for me to figure out. Uh, I've been going back and forth, but I do also like Washington because they are playing at home. I'm not sure if the Cowboys will be able to do what they did last week. Uh, last week their offense was really good. I saw some different play calling some some uh, options from Dak which I really liked it got him moving but I think with that said the Redskins will be prepared for that they'll make Dak throw the ball down the field to beat them and I'm not sure if he can do that uh, so Redskins will win this game but I in fact think it'll be a very entertaining game maybe one of the best games of the weekend 27-24 okay well I'm not gonna say that's not gonna happen yeah, we both think the Redskins will win. So what's the next game? What else is going to happen is the Bengals versus the Chiefs. And I'm going to say, we've talked about this. You picked the Bengals. Well, spoilers. They haven't seen the other podcast. They might not watch the other one. Go ahead. Tell oh, me why. No, no, no. The other moment's ruined now. Way to go. Okay. Tell so, me why and, and Because we've talked about this for the last couple of weeks. As soon as that first loss to the Chiefs happened, there's something with Andy Reid's teams that just drop off a cliff. So this is it, huh? So this is where the cliff is starting to drop. And I'm going to give the Bengals the win here by a score of 28 to 21. So you trust Marvin Lewis, but not Andy Reid. I don't trust either of them. Vontaze Perfect. Couldn't be me. If Marvin, be me, if Jeff. Marvin Lewis, if Marvin Lewis were to suspend or cut Vontez Perfect, I would like him a lot more. But he has no control over his players or over his team. He's just there. He should not even have a job as the head coach anymore. But yeah, his team will win. Yes. So what's the score going to be? I just said 28-21. 28-21. I just wanted to make sure I got it right because you started going on a rant about how Marvin Lewis wasn't good, but then you just picked his team to win against it's that. Not, they were going to do despite of Marvin Lewis. I don't think the Chiefs are going to lose two in a row, especially not to Andy Dalton and the Cincinnati Bengals. You're really underestimating the Bengals and Andy Dalton here. This game is in Kansas City. They don't really lose at home that often. Oh, Kansas City. Oh, yeah. Can I mention the biggest factor? The Bengals have one of the worst defenses in the NFL. So That's why the Chiefs are going to underestimate them and collapse. Just 41 41- 31 so Chiefs. Me, just watch. 41 bah, 31 bah, Chiefs. Bah, 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 bah. Okay, we'll say that again. 41 31 Chiefs. Okay, just so the audience can hear. 41 31 10 point margin of victory for the Kansas City Chiefs. Yes, on sir. Mark Sousa's side. And I believe that is it. I'm Yes, that is it. The next game is a Monday night game, which we will talk about on Monday. But you will. would you like no, to. No, we, we uh, have not talked about one game. A very interesting in the Vikings Jets. Yeah, we did. No, we didn't. I'm pretty positive we did. Jeff, I'm writing all of them down. We did not discuss the Vikings and the Jets. I can promise you that. So why don't you go ahead and tell me what you think about the Vikings and the Jets? Fine. I I guess that was from the last podcast. But I'll take on the Minnesota Vikings going over the New York Jets by a score of 42 to 20 42 to 20 huh yes i mean i could definitely see the jets losing but i don't think it's going to be that big of a margin but i think that this is a bad matchup for the vikings i wouldn't be surprised if the jets win this game they are at home the jets defense has been playing very well without dalvin cook i'm just not sure about the vikings um but then on the other side darnold is a rookie quarterback he's playing against a mike zimmer defense uh, usually a tough matchup, but I do like the Jets in, to win in a weird game. Um, I'm not sure why I'm picking them. I already regret saying it, but the Jets will win this game 24-20. Okay, so you have a lot of close games there. Yeah, it's the NFL. Most games are decided by less than 10 points. Okay, so that is... We're going to take another break since we finished all the games of Week 7 on Sunday. We'll talk about Monday Night Football on Monday. 
Talk but about college football when we get we back. We will yeah. get back with college football. The top 25 teams, we will look at who they're playing and if there will be any upsets. It's going to be exciting. We'll see you right after this. Hold on to your underwear. This is going to be a good one. Whoa. Whoa. Check out the show built around the women of MMA. From the UFC to the extreme cage fighting, we got the fights covered. Listen. It's the Golden State Media Concepts Women's MMA Podcast. The latest news of upcoming fights, discussions of previous matches. Join us as we talk to and about the biggest names in women's mixed martial arts. Past, present, and future. When it's the women's fight game, you know where to listen to. The Golden State Media Concepts Women's MMA Podcast. Welcome back, everyone, to the GSMC Football Podcast. We just talked about the Thursday Night Football matchup. That was the Cardinals and the Broncos. We talked about every single matchup in the Sunday Week 7 matchups that are happening in the world of the NFL. Now, we're going to move on to college football and all the top 25 teams. We're going to look at each team and see if any of them are upsets. Should we go through it? Yeah, or we can. you want to talk about the uh, games where there's two ranked teams playing each other? Sure, we can start with that. Um, number 12, Oregon versus number 25, Washington State. Uh, yeah, that's what the best game in the Pac-12 this weekend. Yeah, uh, that right. Man, I, that one's a tough game to call, to be honest with you. But, you know, Washington State, they are playing at home. But they, you're saying that Oregon quarterback would be the potential number one overall pick. Uh yes, Justin Herbert. Justin Herbert, mm-hmm. yes. Absolutely. He's he's definitely capable of being that guy, of being the number one pick, or at least the number one quarterback in the upcoming draft. I actually think Oregon's gonna win this game. Uh I think that they stay hot, they stay on a roll, and they'll probably creep into the top ten this week. They'll probably move into like eight or nine if I had a guess. Um but yeah, I think Oregon will win. Okay. Uh, moving on to another ranked matchup versus ranked matchup. Number five, LSU faces number 22, Mississippi State. Yeah, that's a, another big game. LSU, it seems like they're finding themselves playing these big games week in and week out. Uh, that That is now, what, the third game in a row that they are playing a ranked team. They lo- lose to Florida. They beat Georgia, probably the most impressive result of last week in college football. If they beat Florida before them, they're probably in the top four. Uh, I mean, they're five right now for sure. Yeah, they'd be number four. Absolutely. Maybe so even like number two. That game is also in LSU, um, but it won't be easy. I mean. Is it ever easy? No, it's not. It's not ever easy. But Mississippi State, we cannot discount what they did or they beat uh, Auburn. So. If you remember, they won twenty three to nine against Auburn. That's super impressive, man. I just don't know what to what to say here. Who do you think will win? I'm going to keep on with LSU at the moment, just because like their momentum beating number two Georgia, I think will carry on against Mississippi State. I think they are the better team overall, and I think they will continue. They're trying to bid into the college football playoff. Yeah, I think yeah, I think LSU will win. Home field plays a factor here. Uh, it should be a close game, though. I wouldn't be surprised if this one goes overtime. Oh yeah, I can see it going to overtime. There's either there's, there's one or two ways this is going to go: blowout or close game. Oh man, you really uh, covered all the bases there. Well, no, it's like well, it could be like a two score game. That's not really a blowout. Like a blowout, I'm talking about like a. <laughs> Three to four score game. Jeff thinks that this football game will either end in a close game or one team running away with it. <laughs> Do you want to do this on your own? Way, way to way to just go out on limbs, bro. It's either going to be a one score game, a two score game, a three score game, a four score game, a five score, or a six score game. How about that? So where where is the blowout? Where does that line? 
Uh, I would say at least four scores. No, come on. You win by three scores, that's a blowout. Two scores could even be a blowout. In college football, that's not a blowout. So 21 point wins on blowout? I would say 28 or more. Okay. Anyways, let's move on. Why don't we talk about the most, the biggest game, at least, like, for eyeballs this weekend? You mean weekend. Clemson and NC State? Mm-hmm. Well, we were talking about that because I just brought it up. We're gonna Go say ahead. We're going to say the one I know you're talking about for, la- for the next okay. one. Number three, Clemson versus number 16, NC State. Probably the closest rankings facing each other this this week, I would have to say. Yeah. Three and 16, that's uh, pretty high up there. There's a hair on my microphone. Anyways, sorry, I got out of topic. That was weird. Um, Clemson, this is a must-win game, obviously, but I think all games are must-win. But this one is just a statement game to, to show they belong in the top four and it's a college football playoff conversation because they haven't really faced teams that are, uh, I would say, competition yet. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, their schedule it's it pretty seems light. to be pretty easy yeah. compared to... Mm-hmm. Yeah. Compared to their counterparts in the top five. Yeah, this uh, is their first real test, so we'll see how they do. But for NC State, you could say the same. So mm-hmm. I can see NC State pulling away with this, though. Uh, I can see an upset. I, I It could happen, but I think Clemson, their defense is just a lot better, in my opinion, than mm-hmm. Mississippi State. Both have really good off Or NC State. They both have really good offenses. Um, I feel this would like be a high-scoring game. What do you think? Uh, yeah, I'd say there's probably like 75 points combined here. Wow, that's more than I was going to say. For college, I think that's pretty normal. Yeah, yeah, you're probably right on that. The over-under is 57, so you're going over that? Yeah, I think it'll be like 70, the, the 75. Clemson is 17 and a half point favorites. Do you think that's too much? 17 and a half? Yeah. Yeah, I think that's too much. That, that seems too much to me also. Like, the LSU-Mississippi State game, that's six and a half points. That kind, That's kind of making sense there. I can see, like, a 38-35 game, you know? Yeah. Like a, and number 12, Oregon versus number 25, Washington. Is a, Washington State is a three-point favorite. That makes sense. They're at home. Yeah, but it's just like... But you're looking at the... Uh, home field advantage makes a Clemson big difference Clemson versus in NC State is the closest... We just talked about the closest team rankings. And they have the biggest, like, blowout margin with 17 and a half when it comes to ranked opponents. Yeah. Home field advantage like, means so number much. Number nine, in college, Oklahoma though. versus TCU. That they're only eight point favorites compared to that. The, I think NC State's been very underestimated. Well, yeah, but here. that's also because TCU is at home. See, if you look at it, the ones that you're surprised by, I guarantee you they're on the road. And yeah, I, and the ones that you're I, like, whoa, that's close. It's because the underdogs at home. Well, I just think that NC State's not getting enough credit for this because they're close to Clemson. They're in a roughly close. They might yeah, they might have some fans fill the stadiums. You never know. Yeah, maybe so. Um, a game that I think should uh, be a uh, one to watch is Tennessee and Alabama because Alabama is number one. Granted, Tennessee has known to upset teams of this high rank before. Granted, Alabama is a twenty and a half point favorite for this, but I still see Tennessee as a possible humongous upset. What do you think? Mm, I don't know. They, 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 they they've been known for this thing before. I they, don't think that's going to happen this week. Yeah, Alabama is a very good team, no doubt about it. But I'm saying it could be a sleeper upset. If you want to um, say so, I, I support you. Thank you. Appreciate that. But I think Alabama won by four touchdowns or more. All right. All right, granted. All right, now the game you wanted to talk about. Ooh, can we finally talk about it? Michigan and Michigan State. Oh, boy. This is the game of the week. Of, of Michigan. You know, whoever wins, wins the, the state. The game of Michigan. Yeah. I'm going with it. I'm uh, staying with it. Isn't there, like, a trophy for this rivalry game? Yeah. It's like a shillelagh or something? Shillelagh, yeah. Is it a gold shillelagh? That one is the... Uh, is that Notre Dame? Notre Dame, Michigan. They play for the shillelagh. Uh, I got to look it up now. Shillelagh. Whatever. Michelal? Uh, that's how you pronounce it. <laughs> so who do you think is going to win this game? Uh, I'm going to go Michigan because they need this win more than they ever have. It's at ever. Spartan Stadium. Did you know that? I knew it was at Spartan Stadium, but I still think that the Michigan Wolverines need this win more than Michigan State The Michigan does. Wolverines always figure out a way to not it make the, the college it football playoff. It is the playoff. Paul Bunyan Trophy. Okay. But the shillelagh, some of those teams play for the shillelagh. I the, believe that's... Whatever that. it's called. Yeah. We can... Uh... <laughs> Yeah, I think I think that's the um, uh, what's it called? What's it called? What's it so called? who's gonna win this game? Why don't we tell the people? Well, 
it's not going to be like 1902 when Michigan beat Michigen State 119 to nothing. That's I know that's in 1902, loss. but I, I saw that score. I'm like, that is the most absurd. Good thing low, I've ever that's seen. a lot of points. Well, their last meeting, which was last year, was Michigan State taking it 14 to nothing in that humongous, uh, in that big game. I, was that the game that they botched the snap punt? That was, was a that, couple years ago. That was, that was, that. oh, um, I'm sorry. That was in 2015, I believe. Yeah, that was a few. Yeah. Well, Michigan State has won the two of the last three meetings. They Last time Michigan won, they were number two in the nation and won 32-23 to 23 in 2016. Mm-hmm. And that game was in Michigan State. So who's going to win this game, Jeff? Well, looking at this, looking at their history, a lot of the wins come from away teams. So you got Michigan. I do have Michigan. Okay. I don't. I think we should predict a score on this one because it's just the game of the week, in my opinion. Okay. How about 24 to 6? So you got Michigan. I'm kidding. It was because they're ranked that. They're ranked. So yeah. What do you, but what do you, what do you um, score? I'm going to go 23 to 31. You got to stop doing that, man. Oh, yeah. I messed with you, didn't I? Michigan 31 to 23? Yes. All right. I actually think Michigan State's going to win this game, and that's because they're very good at stopping the run, and I don't trust Michigan to win this game. Michigan just... is seven-point favorites mm-hmm. in I don't Michigan trust State. Michigan to win this game by throwing the football. Even though Michigan State can be, can be had in their secondary, they're very good at stopping the run. I think they create problems uh, because of that, and, and Michigan might not be able to move the ball that effectively. I do like them to cover the spread of seven points for sure, but I think Michigan State will win this game 31-28. to 34-28? 31-28. So a three-goal, three-field goal game. A, a field goal to win it? Three points game. At the, at, is it a field goal at the buzzer? Uh, yeah, maybe even OT, but 31-28. Okay, okay. Any other top 25 games you want to mention? Uh no, I well, think that's pretty uh, much let, it. Let me uh, let me just let me just list list them all and see if we have some surprise upsets mm-hmm. here. How about that? Number two, Ohio State versus unranked Purdue. Ohio State, yes. Number fourteen, Kentucky versus unranked Vanderbilt. Kentucky, uh yeah. Number ten, UCF versus East Carolina. UCF. Yeah, I think UCF wins easy. South Florida, number 21, versus Connecticut, who is 1-5. So I'm going to go South Florida. Mm-hmm. 18, Penn State versus Indiana. Uh, that game could be interesting. Yeah. Indiana Indiana is 4-3. and three. Penn State's 4-2. and two. So we, we will see whether that happens. We'll see what happens there. Yeah, they probably don't win. But Indiana, I think they could. I think that'll be a closer game than people think. Here's one that I think is interesting. 15 Washington versus unranked Colorado, who was 19 last week. No, that's an interesting game. But Washington, Washington is, is favored 17 and a half because of home. Yes, but I'm going. I don't. To I say, wouldn't say that they're going to win by that much. I like Colorado. I'm going, to say there's a, I'm going to say there's a possibility. I think Colorado will actually upset and win. Okay, 19 Iowa versus unranked Maryland. Uh, Iowa. Mm-hmm. 23 Wisconsin versus unranked Illinois. Oh, Wisconsin big. 20 Cincinnati versus unranked Temple. Mm, I don't know. What do you think? I'm going to go Cincinnati on this one. Temple is uh Temple is 4 and 3 granted, but Cincinnati is 6 and 0. Oh. I like Temple. Temple is 3 and a half point favorites even though they are at home granted, but I think Cincinnati will come out with the win and keep on in the top 25. It's going to be a coin flip. Yes. Anything else you want to talk about in the world of football? Uh, yeah, so Ted Ginn, wide receiver of the New Orleans Saints, he has been put on IR uh, for the rest of the season, so he's not playing. So expect guys like Traquan Smith and Cam Meredith to step in in his absence. Also, Dalvin Cook, looks like his status for this weekend is also in jeopardy once again. Um, very frustrating for fans of the Vikings and people who have Dalvin Cook on their fantasy team because he seems to always turn the corner on this hamstring and then he's back on the injury report then he's not practicing then he is so another headache for the Vikings and their fans for this weekend but that's all I got okay well hopefully Tank Game makes a good recovery and 
Uh, maybe this, hopefully, this not uh, marks the end of his career. But that's all the time we have for for the football podcast. Uh, we also have the fantasy football podcast later today. You can tune in for to talk about that. But we will see you on Monday when we have all of the Sunday action uh, wrapped up, and we can preview the Monday night football game. We will see you on Monday. You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Football Podcast, part of the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Download our podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Just type in GSMC to find all the shows from the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network from movies to music from sports to entertainment and even weird news you can also follow us on twitter and on facebook thank you and we hope you have enjoyed today's program